Microsoft's generative AI Copilot is finally here and it's available to anyone with a Microsoft 365 account. Now today, what I wanna do is see if it can actually help me write some SQL, if it can be a benefit to me as a data analyst. And then I'm gonna compare its results to what ChatGPT can do. Let's dive in. Okay, here on my laptop, I have SQL Server Management Studio open and I have a real basic query here, just getting the order date, the sum of order quantity and the sum of sales amount from the fact internet sales table. So basic stuff. And when you run this query, you can see here I have the date key, which is also the date, the number of items that were sold and the total sales for the day. So let's see if Copilot can regenerate this query or something very similar. Here in Copilot, which you can get to at copilot.microsoft.com, I'm going to ask it to write a query from the AdventureWorks DW database from Microsoft, so it should know that. And I wanna know the total quantity and total sales amount by day from our internet sales portal. Click Submit, and I'm going to choose the more precise option here because I think that's what we want. We're not looking to be creative when we write our queries. We want the queries to be accurate. So let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so we have our results here. They look pretty good. Let's just test them. I'm going to copy that and switch over to Management Studio. I'll do a new query, paste this guy in, hit execute, and we got the results. In fact, we got a better result because it actually cast the order date as a date. And then in other systems, if I wanted to read that in, like Tableau or Power BI, it would treat it as a date and give me natural hierarchies and all those kind of things. So pretty good. That was a good first step. Now let's see what ChatGPT can do given the same prompt. So here in ChatGPT, I'm using GPT 3.5. I'm going to paste in the same question. So it's word for word and let's see what it does. So the results were definitely given to me much faster. I'm not sure if that really matters. Now let's head over to our database and see what the results are. So back in Management Studio, I'll just pop open a new query, paste that guy in, hit execute and bang, I got the exact same results. So, so far, Copilot and ChatGPT have given me the exact same results. A little bit nicer, I would say, in the ChatGPT one in terms of how it actually structured the query. It looks more something like a human would write, but the actual net result is the exact same in either case. Now let's take it up a notch. Back here in Copilot, I'm going to ask Copilot to add in product category so I can see the totals by month and product category of quantity sold and sales amount. So there's a little bit more going on in this scenario where you have to join to a few different tables and you have to parse out that date so it just gives me back the month. Let's see what it does. Okay, that took a little while here and the query looks pretty good, but let's just test it. I'm gonna copy this and flip over to Management Studio. Here, I'll do a new query. Paste that guy in, hit execute. Ooh, invalid column name product category key. Okay, so I think the logic it had was correct, but it maybe had an outdated version of the database schema, so it didn't know the actual proper join. Let's see if ChatGPT can figure this one out. Back here in ChatGPT, I'll paste in the exact same question, hit go, and it's already done. It's so fast. So if I copy the code from ChatGPT, head over to Management Studio, new query, paste it in, hit execute. Ooh, I get the same result. So they're both working off of an outdated schema here. So far we've got a tie. Let's try to throw one more challenge at it and see where we get. So back here in Copilot, I'm going to ask it to do something a bit more complex. First, I'm gonna let it know that it didn't work. And then this time I wanted to return just the second most selling product from our sales portal. And in it, I only want the name of the product, the total quantity and total sales amount for the most recent year in our database. Now I'm giving it an extra clue here. Hopefully it'll figure it out that it may not know what the most recent year is. So instead of just saying year equals 2024 or whatever, it has to find a way to do that. Now this is a good place to use a subquery or potentially a common table expression. So I'm really curious what it's gonna come up with here. Let's try. There it is, it's using a common table expression. I like this. Okay, so this is a pretty complex looking query. Let me copy it and head over to Management Studio. I'll do a new query, paste this guy in. Okay, so here we're doing with sales data as, so this is a common table expression, really useful feature here. And then it's a whole query here basically to get the highest ranking products or the products that have sold the most. So it's giving me a total quantity and total order. And then it's getting the max year. So I'm curious how this is gonna work, if this is gonna actually give me the results I want where this is in a subquery. 
And then it has another subquery for the ranked product where it's doing the rank over function. So this is getting fairly advanced, I would say. And it's also doing another subquery inside of a subquery for the year to get just the max year. So this is really interesting. I'm curious if this is gonna work. Let's try it. Okay, that is actually quite amazing. It ran instantly, so this is fairly efficient. I'm not sure how it would do on a tremendously large database or something like that. But let's see if ChatGPT can keep up with this because I think that was pretty sophisticated what it did there. Okay, so ChatGPT, giving it a go here. Okay, so ChatGPT did it, again, so much faster. I'm not sure why. And this is actually more the way I would have done it. I would have done everything in a common table expression and then just pulled out some stuff there with another subquery. So I think this is a pretty good example. Let me copy this code in Management Studio. We'll do a new query, paste this guy in, execute. Ooh, and it got it wrong. So... Okay, so ChatGPT missed again because of the schema, but I like what it did, so I'm gonna fix the schema part of it, and we'll just give it English product name here, and then that should be good. Now let's hit execute again. Ooh, and it came up with a different result though. Okay, this is actually really interesting how they came up with different results. So I, as a prompt engineer, was not specific enough. So when I said the most selling, product or the second most selling copilot read that as total sales amount and it brought back the one with the second highest sales amount whereas ChatGPT read order quantity so this is actually quite interesting i do like how ChatGPT wrote this query this seems much more i don't know natural in terms of how it was written something that i would expect to see from an analyst or something if i were looking at a query and copilot is much more robotic you know with all the brackets and everything about how it's doing stuff it feels like this was something auto generated from SQL Server, which isn't the easiest to read always and all that, but it does totally work. So very interesting, different approaches. They both were correct. I was the one that didn't ask the exact right question. But I think the lesson here is that if you're using either of these, Copilot or ChatGPT, it can definitely help you write SQL. Both cases here where I asked it to get that second highest most selling product were kind of complicated questions to, to ask. It's really hard to kind of sort that out if you're not familiar with how to do it. So kudos to both of them. I think they both did a really good job here. ChatGPT missed a little bit on the schema on the last challenge, but they both missed on the schema on the second challenge. So you know, six, six one way, half dozen the other. And so if you are trying to learn something like SQL, this could be a great resource for you. And there was a particular reason why I asked it this question, the second highest ranking product, is because that was the question that I answered correctly to get a job at Facebook all the way back before they were a public company. So if you wanna hear more about what that time was like working at Facebook, check out my video over here. I think you're gonna really like it and get an insight into how it feels to work at one of these big tech giants. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here next time.